I got some little friends I look after over this construction site. If they build that pancake place, those baby owls are toast. Why don't they just build somewhere else? We tried to tell them about the nest, but all we got back was this form letter from this jerk named Muckle saying they had all the permits they needed to build. They don't care about little birds. Hi, I'm David Mizajewski with the National Wildlife Federation. Just like you and me, wild animals need a place to call home, which we call their habitat. But unfortunately, we're losing habitat all over the country. Just like the kids in the movie Hoot, you can make a difference for the wildlife that lives in your neighborhood. Get out of the way, kid! If you want to bury those owls, you've got to bury me, too. Me, too. That makes three of us. One of the main messages of this movie is that you know, you can be any age, you can have any, you, you can just be one person and you can, you can, you can make a difference in something and you can, you can change something. Anyone can help out in the environment by doing just very small things. You don't have to do it on such a broad scale. I mean, everyone can help out just by, you know, not littering and doing things like that. Hi, I'm Brie Larson and I play Beatrice and Hoot. I'm here to show you a fun and simple way that you can change your world for the better. And it starts in your backyard with your own wildlife habitat. Just like the kids in the movie Hoot, you can make a difference for the wildlife that lives in your neighborhood. And it can be as simple as putting out a nesting box or a bird bath or even just a bird feeder. And National Wildlife Federation can show you how. The kids in the movie save burrowing owls and their habitat right in their community. But even if you don't have burrowing owls where you live, I guarantee that you have some pretty amazing wildlife and you can attract that wildlife right to your yard. Creating habitat is more than just about helping wildlife. It's about having fun. When you create a habitat, you're gonna attract all sorts of really cool animals, from slimy slugs and salamanders, to mammals like rabbits and squirrels, and maybe even foxes, to beautiful songbirds and butterflies. It is awesome. It doesn't matter if you have a big backyard, a patio, or even just a small space like this. The idea is to create a suitable environment for your wildlife and have fun while doing it. That's right, and there's just a few simple things that you need to do to attract all sorts of amazing animals. And it really is true, if you do these things, they will show up. Hi, I'm Craig Tufts, naturalist at the National Wildlife Federation. One of the things I really love about my job is getting out and sharing my love and knowledge of the natural world with people just like you, and helping people understand what they can do where they live to make habitat better for wildlife. There's four things that all wildlife need in order to have a healthy habitat. Food, water, cover, and a place to raise their young. Maybe the easiest way to provide food is to put out a bird feeder, but even better is to put out a native plant, something like a purple cone flower that's going to have nectar for butterflies and seed for goldfinches. The second really important thing to provide is water, and you can do that easily just by putting out a bird bath. But even better is to put in a small garden pond that will attract frogs and dragonflies and all kinds of other really neat critters that love water. Cover is the third feature you need to provide. You can go out, you can get a shrub and plant it, and within a couple of years, it's a great place for birds to hide. Even better is to maybe build a rock pile or a brush pile. This is just a wonderful place for little critters like chipmunks and skinks and all kinds of other neat things to, to get in there and hide and, and escape from predators. The last feature you need to provide is a place where wildlife can raise their young. You can go out and buy or build a birdhouse and put that up. Or if you're really lucky, you'll have a hollow tree like this one a place where a raccoon or a flying squirrel can raise their young. Taking on a, a wildlife habitat project like this might seem to be a huge undertaking, but it doesn't have to be. Think about taking your wildlife projects to a school. Engage your, your friends, uh, other students that are interested in uh, making a place better for wildlife. Get the school administration involved and then hook in those teachers. They're really pretty and they get these big cones. It looks like a little cat top of a castle. Many schools have after school programs. If you're an older kid, perhaps it's an opportunity for you to work with younger kids in starting a project, maybe putting in a butterfly garden. And being involved in it, you bring the community and the school together, working together on a beautification project, taking an area that was just desolated and turning it to something beautiful. And you don't have to do it alone. Get friends or family, teachers, youth groups. It's just like what we did in Hoops. If you get a good team around you, you can make big things happen. That's right. And working together is only part of the fun. As your habitat grows and evolves, there's going to be all sorts of really cool things to discover. Yeah, and if you want to try new ideas, that's cool too. I know a great place where you can find them. Hello, everybody. My name's Jerry Bishop, and I'm the editor of Ranger Rick Magazine at the National Wildlife Federation. As you know, we introduce you to really amazing creatures from all over the world, but also some really cool creatures from your own backyard. 
Check out the pages of Ranger Rick. You'll find all kinds of really cool things to do for animals in your own backyard wildlife habitat. To find out everything you need to know about attracting wildlife and certifying your yard or garden with the National Wildlife Federation, you can visit us online or you can watch our show on Animal Planet called Backyard Habitat. In every episode, we take boring old backyards and turn them into something wild. So here's the wayward turtle we've been hearing about. That's right, this is him. <laughs> what kind of turtle is he? This is an alligator snapping turtle. Well, you know what, guys? This is the largest freshwater turtle in the world. This turtle is one day going to be bigger than this bucket. He, he's going to actually weigh over 200 pounds when he's full grown. Fred and Misa, it's my pleasure to present you with your official Backyard Wildlife Habitat Certificate from National Wildlife Federation. And this is going to be a great opportunity for Eric to learn about nature. Don't worry about messing up anything. Just give nature a helping hand and great things will happen. It doesn't have to feel like work either. Just enjoy yourself and nature will take care of the rest. That's right. Before you know it, your habitat's going to blossom into something awesome. Are you ready to get started? Yes. All right, well, the National Wildlife Federation is here to help you protect wildlife for a brighter future. So check it out and see what you can do to make a difference. And with time, all sorts of animals will be coming around. <laughs>